How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 5, machining the flywheel. This is quite a job and you need a substantial lathe to machine this flywheel because it's big. I don't think my Boxford would cope with it. It will swing it from a centre height point of view, but then the cross slide won't come back far enough, so I can't get the cutting tool in a position to do any cutting. So there's no point in doing it the hard way, I'm going to use my Smart and Brown lathe to machine this flywheel because it's bigger. What I'm doing at the moment is trying to position the flywheel in the four-jaw self-centering chuck to see whether or not I can get it in a position where it spins true. It's not the centre boss or the outside edge of the flywheel that I'm concerned with. What I'm looking at is the spoked area, the part of the flywheel around the perimeter which is attached to the spokes. And that's because it looks very bad if you've machined the flywheel accurately, but when you look at it spinning, the inside edge is out of true. In this clip, I'm facing across the front of the centre boss, and I'm doing this for no other reason than to see whether or not the flywheel is chilled, and it isn't, it machines very well. Sometimes you can be really lucky, you can fit a flywheel into a three-jaw self-centering chuck, or a four-jaw self-centering chuck like this one, and it runs fairly true. But this one's not doing and I'm not very thrilled with the way it's looking. The centre bosses of the flywheel are not the same size at each side. There's a longer one and then a shorter one. So I'm holding the flywheel in the chuck by the shorter of the two bosses and the idea is to machine the larger boss both across the front like this and also longitudinally to clean it up. At the moment, the flywheel is held in the chuck, but it's not securely held because all the unevenness and the shale and the sand and the mess of the casting process are still there, and it's not a good surface for the chuck jaws to grip successfully. So by cleaning up this side first, and being very careful and only taking light cuts, I will then reverse the flywheel in the chuck, and for the main machining operations, the flywheel will be more securely held by a freshly machined parallel centre boss. And this is much more secure than the way it is at the moment, because the boss on the other side, apart from it being slightly tapered, is just mainly sand and shale, and not a good surface to grip. As I said earlier, sometimes you can be lucky, the flywheel fits in the self-centering chuck, but in this case I'm not happy with it. I'm going to change this self-centering chuck for a standard four jaw chuck with individually adjustable jaws. This by the way is a cam lock type of chuck, it doesn't have a thread that you screw it onto. And before I put the new chuck on, which I've already cleaned, I clean the register because you don't want any particles of metal to get in the way, otherwise the chuck will not run true. So with the chuck in place, all I have to do is tighten the three cams up, which securely holds the chuck to the headstock spindle. I showed the previous sequence using a self-centering chuck, but really I would always machine a flywheel this way in a four-jaw chuck, because I can get it to run exactly how I want it to run. And don't forget, the part of the casting that I need to be concentric is the inner part where the spokes start, not the outer part. That's a very rough piece of casting. Some people use a faceplate, but I've never had a faceplate. I don't even know what to do with one really. None of the lathes I've ever had in my life have had faceplates. Oh no, I tell a lie, one of them did, but it was the wrong faceplate and didn't fit it. If you're watching this clip very closely, you will have noticed that the lathe tool was near the edge of the flywheel before I started turning it. And once again, I'm double checking, because having a lathe tool, not touching the flywheel, but very close to it, tells me whether the flywheel's in the middle, and it's a good reference point. And now I'm getting somewhere. This is running quite true, so I think I'm okay to start the cutting procedure. I very gently move the lathe tool in towards the casting, not to turn it particularly, but just to find out where the high points are. The tool is hardly touching the casting. The lathe is in very slow back gear, and now and again, you can see the lathe tool just takes a little cut. At the moment, I'm doing two or three things simultaneously. And what I'm currently doing is just slightly altering the angle of the lathe tool and making sure that all the screws are tight. 
because once I start machining this casting, there will be some intermittent cuts, which are like hammer blows on the tool, and if the tool is not tight and comes loose, that could spell disaster. Machining a flywheel successfully, particularly one of this size, takes longer than you think, because the lathe speed has to run very slowly. All the video clips of the machining process are very speeded up, because otherwise the video would be far too long. In real terms, this job took me over three hours to complete. By securely holding the flywheel in a four-jaw chuck, with all four jaws gripping the outer edge, it's very firmly held. Now it's time to machine the centre boss. I've faced the front of the centre boss, now I'm going to cut down the side so it runs true. And not everyone does it this way, but I do. I'm using a right hand knife tool to machine the outside diameter of the first of the centre bosses. And once again, making sure the tool is tight, off we go. There's not much I can say about this, except as you're machining, be very, very careful as you get towards the spokes. The next job is to turn the inside edge of the flywheel. And for this, I use the standard boring bar. And once again, I'm very careful when I get near to the spokes that I don't take too much metal away. And now it's time to start turning the outside edge. And this is running very slowly. I know it's not on this clip, it's speeded up but you need to do this very, very slowly because the speed on the outside edge of a flywheel this size is quite fast. These are carbide tip tools, so blunting the tool isn't a massive issue, but if you turn the flywheel too fast, you'll get a very strange finish on the work and sometimes chatter marks. That's as far as I can cut because the jaws are in the way, so it's now time to turn the flywheel round in the chuck and machine the other side. The process is identical, facing across the front of the boss, changing the tool to go down the side of the boss, being very careful not to go too far and hit the spoked area. To get through the surface skin of the casting, I had to take slightly more metal off this side, so we'll have to match this on the other boss. So when I get to the end of this machining operation, I will take note of the size of it and duplicate this on the other side. Just in case you're wondering, when do I drill the hole down the middle? Well, we're getting close to that. The first thing I do is drill a centre hole, and then I use a live centre to support the centre of the flywheel while I turn the outer edges. This is not absolutely essential, but it ensures that the flywheel is held firmly in position. And once again, using the boring bar, I'm cleaning up the inside edge of the outer part of the flywheel. By the way, whilst I had the boring bar in the tool post, not only did I clean up the inside edge, I cleaned up the front face as well. Like a lot of sand castings, this flywheel was quite uneven. Half of it was okay, and the other half was a little bit rough. But the left hand knife tool made short work of that, but it didn't give a very good finish. So I used this, this is a round nose tool, and I find these really good for cast iron. You get a good finish, you don't get a line finish. When you look at the full size, there are lots of lines. And these lines are caused by a very small lathe tool cutting the metal of maybe a 32 ton flywheel. So it's a very small lathe tool and a very large item. You can get grooves on these if you use a point tool, but it doesn't look so good on a model. I'm going to polish this up. This is a second operation with the boring bar. Initially, I just used the boring bar to clean up this inside surface, and now I'm using it properly to get a good finish. I machined the first half of the flywheel for a distance of half an inch from the edge of the flywheel to where the spokes start. So here, I'm duplicating this half an inch fine cut on this side of the flywheel. I'm using a file to remove the sharp edges from the flywheel, and then a piece of sandpaper to smooth everything out. I need to make a hole 5 eighths of an inch in diameter in the centre of the flywheel and this must be very very accurate. So I'm not just drilling it with a 5 eighths drill, this is a 39 64 drill. Yes it's a bit of a bizarre size. The idea of this is it's just small enough or large enough to make it so that a reamer will follow it through and size the hole to 5 eighths of an inch. 
One very common problem that I see with steam engines that I work on is the fact that the flywheel is a rattle fit on the crankshaft. Now there's no excuse for this, so I'm going to make sure that this is not a rattle fit on the crankshaft. And here's the secret, and it's not witchcraft. First of all you go through with the 3964 drill, as I've just mentioned, and then you use the reamer. But the secret is, run the lathe very slowly. And if you do it like this, it will fit on your crankshaft with no shake whatsoever. So once again the rule is, drill the hole ever so slightly under the finished size, you could even bore it with a boring bar. Then run the lathe very slowly and feed in a reamer of the size that you require. All that remains to be done, apart from painting the flywheel, is to cut the keyway. And I'll show you how to do that in another episode. I want the flywheel on this 5A to be very accurate. I hate to see wobbly flywheels and I see them all the time. So what I'm doing here is I'm machining a mandrel and again accurately machining a mandrel. This doesn't want to be a rattle fit, it doesn't want to be a tight fit, it wants to be a perfect fit in the hole in the flywheel. And to secure the flywheel to the mandrel I'm going to use some Loctite 603. I've been working on this flywheel for the last three hours, so it's time to have a quick cup of tea while the Loctite cures. And the first thing I did when I got back from the tea break was to take a very fine cut down the outer edge of the flywheel. Not much at all, just a gentle cut. And the rest of the job was just a clean up operation, different grades of sandpaper to get a good finish on the outside edge of the flywheel. The last job to do was to remove the mandrel from the centre of the flywheel. And I did that by heating up the centre of the flywheel until the bond of the Loctite gave way and I could remove the mandrel. And you can see evidence of the heat by the colour of the centre boss, but this will be painted anyway so it's not a problem. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.